Hello again, higher algebra students, here with lesson three of unit seven, forms of a quadratic two. Uh, a couple objectives here to be able to rewrite a quadratic in standard form, and we will recap what standard form is as well. And to be able to, be able to identify the vertex from an equation in vertex form and identify if it is a maximum or a minimum. So we'll jump. So here, just a quick recap of the three forms of quadratic we have here. Uh, we have the standard form, which again is the one you're probably most used to, that it, uh, really helps us find that y-intercept um, most clearly. Uh, it also has that scale factor out front, as they all do, which helps us determine if it's opening up or opening down um, in terms of it being a smiley or frowny face. Um, and, and that helps us determine max and min. Um, and it helps us to determine the pattern of change as we get going here. Uh, the factored form, which can tell us those x-intercepts based on what makes each of these equal zero. And then the vertex form, which can help us determine where is the vertex, which allows us to then find the axis of symmetry. So again, we've got our three forms. And these three, again, you want to keep near. Um, we'll use all three, and they all have their own kind of uh, value tied to them in terms of finding the specific elements of a, of a quadratic. So first of all, we want to make sure that we can uh, transition from one form to another. So just as a, a quick little activity here to be able to um, change from vertex form to general form. So again, vertex form, this is really good for helping us find our vertex. Uh, for instance, the vertex on this very first equation would be at negative 1, 8, which means the uh, the axis of symmetry would be at x equals negative 1. So we could find those pretty quickly from this. And again, the reason it's a negative 1 is because it's minus a negative 1 that led to that plus. And then, the, again, the other value is going to be your, your uh, y value for the vertex. Um, there's nothing out in front, so that means there's technically a 1 there for the a. So that helps us that know that this is a smiley face. And, and so the vertex form is, is helpful for us. But let's just move it over to the general or to the standard form. And again, to do that, now um, x plus 1 squared is really x plus 1 times x plus 1. And then we have that plus 8 at the end. And so we're going to FOIL here. First is x squared. Outside is uh, 1x, really. Inside is also 1x. And last, uh, which is 1 times 1 or 1. And then we still have that plus 8 there. So when you combine like terms here, what you're going to get is an x squared. And we have 2x because we have a 1x and a 1x. And then plus 1 and plus 8 makes it a plus 9. So now, again, what this helps us find is our is going to be our y-intercept again. Um, and so we've got just from these two forms, we found the vertex. We found uh, the vertex here. We found the, the axis of symmetry here. And then we have that y-intercept here that comes from the from the standard form. So there's our standard form for this particular problem. All right, looking at the second one here. Uh, same sort of deal here. We're going to take this x minus 3 and expand it out to x minus 3 times x minus 3, add 5. And then we'll uh, foil. First is x squared. Outside is x times negative 3x, which is a negative 3x. Inside is negative 3x times x, which is another negative 3x. And finally, last, negative 3 times negative 3 is a plus 9. And then we did have that plus 5 on the end as well. So when we combine like terms here, we've got the x squared. We've got those two negative 3x's, which together are a negative 6x. And then we've got a plus 9 and a plus 5, so that's plus 14. Okay? Um... We could do that same thing. This bottom one's going to be this very similar, but let's just look at the third one and then we'll move forward. So this one you can see has a negative 2 out front. So with this negative 2, what that means is the negative 2 is going to stick out front like that and we'll expand the x minus 4s to x minus 4 times x minus 4, which of course is x minus 4 squared, and then we'll subtract that 10. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to distribute this negative 2 into that first term. Okay, so that negative 2, that's the a, that's that leading value that was referenced on the, on the summary slide of the three forms. And so when we distribute that, that gives us a negative 2x plus 8, because it's negative 2 times negative 4. So that's going to go in the first parenthesis. 
the second parenthesis will still be x minus 4, and then we have a minus 10. So you can see we aren't really changing so much what we're doing. We're just getting that negative 2 folded into those first terms. So now we've got negative 2x times x, which gives us a negative 2x squared. Outside is negative 2x times negative 4, which is actually going to be a plus 8x. So that's going to get um, doubled up by that 2 there. And then we've got the inside, which is 8 times x. So that's another plus 8x. And then last, which is going to be 8 times a negative 4, or minus 32, a negative 32. And then we had a minus 10 as well. So again, we've got a negative 2x squared to lead. We've got plus 8x and plus 8x, so that's plus 16x overall. And then a minus 32 and a minus 10 gives us a minus 42. So again, what are the values of changing between forms? Well, the values, again, stem from what does that form give us in terms of a vertex or x-intercepts or y-intercepts, um, where it's increasing, where it's decreasing, those sorts of things. So um, just be prepared to move between them. Again, we'll leave that fourth one since it's very similar to the first and the second. Moving on now. So here we go, finding the vertex. So you can see this vertex form, again, is designed to make it very easy for us to find that vertex. And so having this in vertex form will make our lives easier. So here you can see this is what we expanded in the standard form on the last slide, which would allow us to find the y-intercept. But this is just asking us to find the vertex. Now again, keep in mind that the minus is built into the equation. So that's going to seem a little backward with that minus in there. For instance, this first uh, equation right here, the vertex that is the h here, the term that is the h, is actually a negative 5. The reason being is this would be x minus negative 5 when you take this down, um, this form here, x minus h form. And that minus a negative is what made it a plus. And so that negative 5 is there. And then the k is just straightforward again. Um, this is kind of like the translations from the previous unit where the k gets to just be straightforward. Um, I shouldn't say kind of, it really is the same idea. And so that's a, a negative 5, negative 8 as a vertex. And again, a vertex really means on these parabolas, what's that very bottom or what's that very top? Sorry, that's a poor drawing, but what's the very top of um, these parabolas. Okay, so where does that, where's that peak or that valley bottom out or top out or top out or bottom out at? Um, now you're looking at the second one here. Again, there is this two out front, but that's just means that the A is two. That doesn't change our vertex per se. So this one is a minus three. So that minus three there, again, because the minus is already built into the equation, that means H is actually just three. And k would be a negative 1 since it's a minus 1 on the outside. Okay, looking at the third one here is back to a plus. So that's a negative 1 because it was x minus a negative 1 is what got us to that plus. Again, because the equation is an x minus to begin with. And then 9 would be the y value of our vertex. And finally, this bottom right is going to have a positive 10 and a positive 6 because the minus is there. And that's how the equation is set up as a minus. So that means the h is a positive 10. And you could naturally write these like this as well if you really wanted to. All right, moving forward. Um, so here we have a quadratic graph. A couple things that characteristics that are going to be important for us to note here. Um, so you see the vertex. Okay, The vertex is that bottom red dot there. Um, that would be a minimum point here. Uh, because it's naturally at the bottom of the graph, not at the top. The axis of symmetry, you can't, it's tough to see here, but there's a little green line um, going right up here. This would be the axis of symmetry, which means it just cuts this graph in half. And it, in this case, it would be the line x equals zero. It's right on that y-axis because the graph is just the, uh, in this case, is the y of equals x squared or f of x equals x squared graph. Um, it opens up if the A is greater than zero, and it opened, opens down if the A is less than zero. Again, the A is that leading term. We usually see that AX squared. Since this is just uh, X squared, that means the A in this problem is one. Okay, so the value in front of here is just one. Um, in this case, it's really plus zero X plus zero. Um, that would be that standard form, but since we don't have any 
um, single x terms or um, coefficient term at the end, we just would have really, uh, in this case, y equals 1x squared is our ax squared, or f of x equals. So this one will open up because the a is greater than 0 in this case. Um, it has the maximum value, which is the y value of the vertex. So you can see there's the min minimum value. And the minimum value occurs at the point 0, 0. And so the minimum, uh, excuse me, the vertex is 0, 0, and the minimum value occurs at x equals 0. And that's what um, the y value there is 0, but the minimum value is really where does it occur. Um, and so that's our x equals 0 is where it occurs, and the y value at that point is 0. A pattern of change. So pattern of change is what we're used to seeing here with these squared um, graphs, the quadratics, um, is that if it does not equal 1, then the, point, the pattern of change will change, will be different. But if it, as long as it's 1, then the pattern of change will go as 1, 3, 5. And what that really means here, it's going to zoom in, is as we go over 1 in either direction, um, as we go over 1, and you can see this is actually 1, 3, 5 here. As we go over one unit, which is actually two boxes here, that that goes up one, okay? As we go over another one, this actually went up three. As we go over another one, this actually went up five. So the pattern of change, and I know the scale being a, a half unit scale with the, with the gray boxes here makes it a little trickier, but what's happening here is every one full unit that we go over on the X, which would be, there's one, you can see that every two, every two boxes is a full unit. Um, we go up one unit the first round, we go up three units the next round, we go up five units the next round, and that sort of pattern will continue as we go on. Naturally, four squared is 16. So to go from here, we'd go over to four and we'd have to go up seven units to get up to the 16, since this is at a Y value of nine. So that pattern of change is something we'll look at as well. And again, 1, 3, 5 is what we expect. And the only way we manipulate that is by changing the value of A. And we will talk more about that as we progress. So for instance here, a pattern of change, again, if A is 1, then that pattern of change, as we go over 1, we're going to go up 1. As we go over 1 more, we're going to go up three. As we go over one more, we're going to go up five. And so you can see here, as I zoom in, and if I go either direction, you can see that by default, I went over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, up three, over one, up three, over one, up five, over one, up five. And what we're saying then is if the a is different. So let's say we have f of x equals 3x squared, and maybe it's plus other things there, or minus other things. But what that 3 up front does is it just triples that pattern of change, or that point of change. Um, you'll see both terminologies. You can see, obviously, a point of change here, pattern of change is, is how I'd put it on the last slide. But, um, but they, they reference the same idea here. And so when I have this pattern or point of change of 3, that means I take essentially each one of these values in my 1, 3, 5, and I multiply each one by 3. So my pattern of change here will actually be 3, 9, 15. Okay, which again is just 1 times 3, 3 times 3, and 5 times 3. Similarly, if my pattern, if my a value is 4, so if it's 4x squared and whatever else, then my pattern of change would be 4, 12, and 20, which is again these values each multiplied by 4 since the a is 4. So our point of change pattern of change will vary with whatever that leading coefficient a value is as just a multiple of the original 1, 3, 5. Now, um, if we were to look at these quadratics here, and we're looking at if these are maximums or minimum values, and what causes it to flip. So what we need to think about here is in all of these situations, the A again is out front of everything. Okay, in this case, these are in vertex form. So this is our general form here, but the A is gonna be out front. So for instance, as we look at this first one, 
the A value on this first one is just a 1. Because if there's nothing there, then that just is a 1. So naturally, that's a positive value. It's greater than 0, which means, therefore, this will open up. Okay, And so this graph would look like this in some fashion. So in terms of is the vertex a max or a minimum, it would here be a minimum because, again, we've got that smiley face this time. Sorry, I suppose I didn't need to put the mouth in there if I'm making the graph the mouth. Um, look at the second one here. The A value here is 2. So naturally, A equals 2. That's greater than 0. So this, again, will open up. Whatever it looks like. You know, it's going to be moved over and down because of the, the, where the vertex is. But what we're really just looking at is, does this open up or down? So here, this one um, will open up, Okay, meaning it's a smiley face. So again, we'd have a minimum in this particular problem. Bottom left, you can see that's another one. So that would also be a minimum. Now bottom right, here's the other look here. So in this case, the A is negative 3, which is naturally less than 0. So this is going to open down because of the negative. Okay, if, this is, if it's less than 0, then it opens down. That's that, the three dots, that just means therefore. Okay, so this would be opens down. So the vertex on this problem would be a max. And again, whether it's a min or a max is all determined by that leading A term. If it's positive, it's going to open up. And it's going to be a min. If it's negative, it's going to open down. And it's going to be a max. All right, so just looking at the graph alone here, let's just nail all this information in then. So as we look at this graph, First question, what are the x-intercepts? Well, the format of the x-intercepts is to write them as xy coordinates. So in this case, the format would be a negative 5, 0, just working left to right. And then the other x-intercept would be at 1, 0. So that would be these two points right there where it crosses the x-axis. Those would be our x-intercepts. Our y, excuse me, our vertex here is at the a minimum in this case. And it's at the point, again, as an xy coordinate, negative 2 for x, and a negative 9 for y. So that is our vertex. The y-intercept, you can see, is labeled right here already. And again, we write that as a coordinate, 0, negative 5. So the intercepts, you'll always have a 0. Um, if it's an x-intercept, your y-value will be a 0. If it's a y-intercept, your x-value will be a 0, because, again, that's where it's crossing the axis. The domain of this graph, um, I'm going to presume right now, and sorry that my drawing cuts it off, but I'm going to presume that this goes on forever. So my domain here will still be negative infinity to infinity. My range, we can see that it bottomed out um, as a minimum at negative 9 included, but it goes up to infinity as this will continue to go up. Um, the increasing window here, so again, this is what... What portion of the graph are we going uphill? And again, we start going uphill right when our x gets to the right of negative 2. So our, our uphill actually goes from negative 2 to infinity, which means not right at the bottom. Okay, That would be a bracket. But right when we get to the right of that green, then we're going uphill. Okay, And from the left, we started decreasing basically at, at x equals infinity. And then we ended up getting to the bottom at x equals negative 2. But again, that's still a, a parenthesis and not a bracket because at the very bottom, we're actually just a point not going up or down, but we're decreasing all the way into that point and then increasing out of that point. Keep in mind, for your increasing and decreasing, you're referencing x values here um, when, you're, when you're giving that, uh, the coordinate window there. Uh, the axis of symmetry, again, is the where this gets cut in half. And this gets cut in half at the vertical line uh, of x equals negative 2. And again, that will always be x equals the value that is the x value of the vertex. So this number and this number will always be the same. Um, so that's our axis of symmetry. And now if we write this in all of its forms, okay? So our factored form here. Again, by factored form, and I'll just, I'm going to zoom in so you can see each of these ones a little, a little clearer. Factored form, in general, and again, 
So since we're based off the x-intercepts here in our factored form, we will write this as, and you can use that first slide as help if you need to, but it would be x minus p and x minus q. Okay, so they're both x's because it's the factored form here. And so when we write this with our, with our x-intercepts of negative 5, 0, and 1, 0, first thing we need to look at is what is our, our pattern of change or point of change? Well, as we went over 1 from our minimum, we went up 1. As we went over another one, we went up 3. As we went over another one, we went up 5. So our pattern of change is the typical 1, 3, 5. So that value would be a 1 there. Okay, so now for our, for our two x-intercepts that are going to guide us the rest of the way through this factored form, again, our first x-intercept was at negative 5, 0. So this would be x minus a negative 5. Again, there's a minus built into the equation. So you, so you have the minus anyways, and then the negative 5 is the p in this problem. And then finally, our other intercept is at 1, 0. So this would be just x minus 1. Okay. Now, as we just clean this up a little bit with the 1 out front, we don't need to bring that along. We technically could distribute it, but it doesn't change anything. So I'm just going to change the minus a negative to a plus, and then that stays x minus 1. So this is our factored form. And again, the factored form was really nice to write as long as we had our x-intercepts. So this is all based off of here the x-intercept values. Okay, that's how we write that factored form. And then, of course, we had to determine the A by seeing if that 1, 3, 5 change was occurring or if it was something different. So from there, probably the easiest road next is to actually take that factored form and to convert it to our standard form now. So, so I'm going to take that x plus 5 and x minus 1, which again is factored form here, but I'm going to use that to convert to standard form. So standard form here is going to be our FOIL to, to get it into our, our x squared or ax squared plus bx plus c format. So FOIL is first times first, so that's x squared. Outside, which is x times a negative 1, so that's a minus 1x. Inside, which is 5 times x, so that's a positive 5x. And last, which is 5 times a negative 1, so that's a minus 5. So from there, we're just going to combine like terms. And that gives us x squared. Again, minus 1x and plus 5x is a plus 4x, and then minus 5. So this would be our standard form. And again, this would help us in, in the end find our y-intercept at negative 5 here, which you can see is exactly where it was on the graph. And this is exactly why this is a minus 5 at the end. So thirdly, let's look at the vertex form. And I'll just shove this one down a little bit. Again, the vertex form is, not surprisingly, we, we write that based off of the vertex. So the format here for this is, oh, sorry, I'll just get rid of that. Okay, the format here is f of x equals a and then x minus h squared plus k. So this is our, our format for vertex form. Again, um, this is something you'll just hopefully get more and more used to over time. And we already know our a is 1 in this problem. We found that out when we wrote the factored form. That's based off the pattern of change. But now, what was our vertex again? Well, our vertex right here was the point negative 2, negative 9. Okay, so our vertex, our h, k, in this case, is negative 2, negative 9. So as we write this, again, the minus is already there, so it's x minus a negative 2 plus a negative 9. Okay? Which, of course, we'll end up writing as minus 9 here. But, um, but now we can convert these to make it a little cleaner. So the 1, again, we don't really need to worry about because that just distributes in and leaves everything the same. But we'll rewrite inside the parentheses. Instead of minus a negative, we'll rewrite that as a plus. Okay? Instead of plus a negative, we'll just rewrite that as a minus. So our vertex form here, sorry, my lefty keeps hitting the side here our vertex form would look like this. So all three of these equations here, factored, standard, and vertex, 
all have the exact same result, which is this graph right here. So if you were to put these three equations into Desmos, there would be three pictures that are all right on top of each other. Okay, they're all the exact same graph. They all have all of these characteristics. It's just that the x-intercept was most closely tied to the factored form. Okay, the y-intercept was most closely tied to the standard form. And the vertex was most closely tied, not surprisingly, to the vertex form, which was down here. All right. So hopefully you, you've felt increasingly comfortable with that, but I'll just do one more example here that if you want to watch and so you just have a, another time through it that uh, may be helpful for you. So just, I'll do this a little more quickly, but uh, what we have here for x-intercepts are right here and right here, which is at negative five, zero and three, zero. So those would be our x-intercepts. Again, where does it cross the x-axis? The y values would be zero there, and it's just one of the x values there. The vertex, I know it's a little tough to see here, but the vertex actually occurs at negative one, negative 16. Okay, so that's the y value is negative 16 there, and the x value is negative one. The y-intercept you can see is labeled there. That's at zero, negative 15. Presuming that this goes on forever again, which we can't presume typically, but I'm going to going to just put the arrows there to say it does. Then our domain is negative infinity to infinity. Our range, this bottoms out at negative 16 and goes up to infinity um, as it just keeps going to getting bigger and bigger y's. Again, domain is the x's and range is the y's. Uh, so in terms of what are the x values for where it's increasing and decreasing, so it's increasing here starting at a negative really just past a negative one for x. So this would be negative one to infinity are the x values where this is increasing. Again, not including negative one because there it's neutral. It just finished going down and now it's starting to go up. So we consider that to be kind of the, the halfway point there, the neutral point. Decreasing here, it started decreasing at negative infinity and it finished decreasing at an x value of negative one. So our axis of symmetry is actually x equals negative one going up right here. That's the graph for the axis of symmetry. Now again, the factored form um, here, if we double check the pattern of change, um, we'll just make sure that as we go over one, it went up one. As we go over another one, it went up three. As we go over another one, it went up five, which is what happened here. It's tough to see because it goes by twos here, but that is, um, it went from negative uh, 16 to negative 15, negative 15 to negative 12 right there. And so it is 1, 3, 5. So this would be an A of 1 up front. And again, now it's just X minus for both of these intercepts. And the intercepts occurred at negative 5 and positive 3. So that's X minus a negative 5 and X minus a 3. So as we clean that up, our factored form is x plus 5, x minus 3, okay? Um, and from there, then we can, can uh, foil that to uh, get us to our standard form. So I'm just going to um, foil right here on the run. So that would be x times x is x squared. Outside is x times a negative 3, so that's minus 3x. Inside is a 5 times an x, so that's a positive 5x. And last is a five times a negative three. So that's a minus 15. You can see that minus 15 lines up with the y-intercept there at negative 15. And then I'll just combine like terms. Minus three X and plus five X gives us a plus two X. So there is our standard form there. There was our vertex form, excuse me, our factored form here. And then finally our vertex form which is gonna be based off the vertex, which occurred at negative one, negative 16. So we know that the, that the A is one again. And so in the inside, we've got the X minus H. So that would be X minus a negative one is what the X value of the vertex was. And that's squared. And then again, we have the, the minus 16. So we have a plus a negative 16 since it was a plus K at the end. And as we clean that, clean that up, x minus a negative on the inside gives us a plus, 
and then it was plus a negative or a minus 16 on the outside. So that would be our vertex form there. Um, thank you, as always, for watching and listening. If you have questions, please ask.